Some weapons were only found in the hands of the gifted. They called those weapons divine arms. They are the materialization of one's soul and possess unique powers. There's a noble family that once defeated the evil god, the ducal house, catastrophe. The people of this family had everything from birth, strong bodies, exceptional talent, and even incredible divine arms. Bell was born into this family, so of course he'll become a hero proudly wielding his sacred armament. Or so it should have been. But at the oracle ceremony where one's divine armament is discovered, Bell was told that he had none. He became the one and only failure in their family's history. Bell was ruthlessly pushed to the ground by his brother, calling him an embarrassment. Catastrophe family second son, Zane. Holding Bell's hair, Zane told him that a worthless scum like Bell, who can't summon a divine weapon, doesn't belong in the family. Bell, with bruises on his face, moaned from the pain. At the back, Bell's eldest sister, Jessica, and younger sister Sarah were looking. Sarah tried to rush to Bell, but she was tripped by Jessica, causing her to fall with her face to the ground. Jessica told her to just watch while stepping on Sarah's head. Proudly looking at Zane beating Bell, Jessica told Sarah to see what happens to people like Bell, powerless fools with filthy blood. Bell, seeing her sister humiliated, shouted Sarah's name, but was punched by Zane in the stomach. He was beaten up by Zane repeatedly at his face and told him the filthy half-breeds surely get along. Zane and Jessica repeatedly called Bell and Shara mongrels. They were children born from concubines and thus were called mongrels. Zane and Jessica tormented them at every opportunity they had. Sitting at the top of the hill, Bell apologized to Shara that it's his fault for being powerless. Sarah just smiled at Bell and comforted him to not worry, and she'll always be on his side. Bell looked at Sarah and said that. He'll become strong without a divine weapon. He promised that he will protect her with her life. Sarah was overjoyed and hugged her brother while thanking him. Alas, Bell wasn't able to fulfill that promise. A few days later, he was banished from home. With the rain pouring all over him, he cursed. Without him there, Sarah will all be alone with those guys, and she will surely be bullied. He knew he needed power at least enough to get Sarah out of there. Mastering one normal weapon is still useless in front of a paladin with divine arms. Bell needed to do everything he could to grow stronger. Since he had no other choice, he went to a nearby village. He entered a store and brought out this huge pouch. Bell poured all the gold coins in his pouch and spread it, and requested to take one of each kind of weapon in the store. The shopkeeper was shocked and asked Bell if he was going to start a war or something. Two years later, Bell was riding a horse with several kinds of weapons on his back. His expression turned more serious as he focused his gaze in front of him. Our MC will be facing a group of orcs. He was holding a mace and a sword while several other weapons were lying in front of him. He took a fighting stance and prepared himself for the battle. Bell started using a dagger, then he switched to a gun. He was also able to use a spear and an axe, and a few slashes later, all of the orcs have been defeated. Little did he know, a mysterious man cloaked in white was watching the fight above a small cliff. The mysterious man addressed Bell and asked a question. He wondered why Bell carried so many weapons. He thought that this is just the cravings of someone without divine arms. But Bell kept silent. The mysterious man added that he almost forgot why he set out on this trip. He revealed that he is looking for someone to entrust something with. He was looking for someone with great potential to become the hero. Bell looked at him confused. The man then gathered his mana towards his palm. With a wave of his hand, the mysterious man casted a lightning bolt down at Bell. Bell was shocked when he saw something piercing the ground with electricity crackling on its surface. Our MC was shocked as soon as he realized what this thing was. The mysterious man told him that he would entrust it to Bell. The weapon still emits this powerful lightning around its body. Bell thought that it was a sword. 
He then pulled the item and was shocked to discover that it's just a scabbard. The divine scabbard, Avalon. A one-of-a-kind divine armament that allows a user to store their divine armament and pass it to others. Pass down from generation to generation in order to accumulate its power. It now holds the weapons of five great heroes throughout history. If one can wield all of them, they will possess the strongest divine armament in the world. And Bell thought that he shall do it. Three years later, the mysterious man and Bell were standing at the top of a tower. Our MC was facing a red dragon. The dragon roared and blew fire at him. But instead of panicking, he just raised his hand. He also commented that he doesn't really care with that much heat. Bell screamed for Avalon, and the divine scabbard appeared. He took a stance and uttered the word manifest. The scabbard then started glowing. Bell held his hand, and mana started to surround it. And all of a sudden, a huge green shield appeared. This one is called the Wind Shield of Achilles. As the dragon blew fire at him, he used the shield to create a barrier to deter the flames. Next, he conjured Thunderhammer Mjolnir. He bent his knees while preparing for his next attack. Our MC jumped high and faced the dragon head on. And using the skill Thor's hammer, he smashed the dragon's head with great force. With that, the dragon was defeated, and the mysterious man praised Bell. He told him that he already mastered at Avalon. He told Bell that he can go to his sister now. Not even an S rank paladin would be a threat to Bell. This guy didn't expect that his training had finally ended. With great enthusiasm, he told his master, Yes, and will now go back home. It's been five years since Bell was banished. He finally had the power to protect his little sister. While riding his horse at full speed, he asked for Sarah to just a little bit more. He knew that he was now more powerful than ever, and he is now coming back. But as he neared the estate, he was greeted by burning houses. Bell was confused about what was happening. From afar, he saw the crest of the Duchy of Rothwinsor. He observed the surroundings and thought of something. It looks like there was a civil war currently going. Then he remembered Sarah and went to the manor to look for her. Bell, running across the halls, shouted Sarah's name. The door of his little sister's room was already open, and he found her beyond a door, her lifeless body lying along a pool of blood. Bell was devastated. He rushed to Sarah. He called her again and again, but to no avail. Sarah was already dead. Our MC knew that he messed up. All those years of trying to become more powerful were wasted. Bell remembered the promise he made to protect Sarah. He shouted in despair. He questioned himself repeatedly. For what reason did he gain all this power? He promised Sarah that he will protect her, and yet this happened. And while he was mourning his little sister's death, a beam of red lightning was casted. It passed through Bell. Our MC was not able to react at all. The next thing he knew was that he was in a lot of pain. Someone with an ominous aura then stepped inside the room. Bell felt the mana, and he knew that it must be an S rank divine arms user. The intruder walked from behind him and asked him if he was Bell Catastrophe, the one that had been banished long ago. Bell didn't answer, but he wondered how this enemy knew his name. Without waiting for Bell's reply, the intruder said that he will just send Bell to his sister. Looking back at the intruder, Bell knew he was the one who killed Sarah. The intruder commented that our MC should just go and be a good brother so he could keep Sarah's company for eternity. Bell tried to stop this from happening, but it was already too late. A more powerful red lightning hit his body and it immediately resulted in his death. Bell cannot accept this. He did not even get his revenge. A bright light flashed before his eyes. And the next thing Bell knew was that he was now standing in front of a priest. He looked at his body and wondered where he was. These window patterns were clearly too familiar. He is inside the Catastrophe Cathedral. The priest interrupted his thoughts and told Bell that they would now start the oracle ceremony. That was just the time when he realized that he went back in time. 
The priest told Bell to hold out both his arms and picture his divine armament. But Bell knew that he had no divine armament at this point yet. Back then, Avalon was not yet given to him, and that means he will have to start all over and be banished again. Mana flowed between his palms. His eyes widened as he saw the thing that was in front. Bell was surprised. There's no doubt about it. He knew this weapon. It's Avalon. Bell was ecstatic while holding his precious divine weapon. He thought that with this, he gets to do everything over again. But with Avalon with him, he planned to change his tragic fate. With a determined expression, Bell knew that his real life will start now. The priest saw Bell's armament. He said it was just a divine scabbard, unfortunately. Bell asked the priest if he thought he couldn't fight with a scabbard. The priest quickly said that he didn't mean what he said earlier. Bell reassured him and told him that this is the best divine armament there is. Our MC then quickly ran through the halls in search of Sarah. She must be in her room right now. Bell gritted his teeth as he pushed the door open. There, Sarah was sitting on a chair facing the window. She greeted Bell with a smile. Bell was overwhelmed by emotions on seeing Sarah in this life. Sarah happily ran to Bell. She asked how the ceremony went. Bell quickly hugged her in happiness, happy that his sister was alive. Sarah, noticing Bell's emotions, asked him what was wrong. Bell, deep in thought, repeatedly apologized that he wasn't able to stay with her and protect her in their previous life. But this time, they will not have such a tragic end. He won't let her experience pain or sadness ever again. He will surely protect her this time. Bell's thoughts were halted with Sarah's complaining that he hugged her too tight. He says sorry, Sarah said it's fine, and she was happy that Bell hugged her. Looking at Bell, she was startled to see him crying. She comforted him and patted his head. She said to Bell that no matter what happened, everything's fine. Bell has her, after all. A voice suddenly broke the atmosphere. The door was forcefully opened by Zane. Zane looked at Bell with a cunning smile and said that he finally found him. Bell and Sarah both became wary of their stepbrother. He smiled and told Bell that he heard everything. Zane placed his arms on Bell's shoulder and asked Bell if he got something interesting in the oracle ceremony. Bell thought that it seems the priest told Zane and he came to mock him. Our MC replied and said he got a scabbard. Zane laughed at this loudly. He mocks Bell and says that it's not a weapon. It sure fits a filthy half-breed mongrel like Bell. Then Zane asked Bell how he could fight with just a scabbard and said that Bell and Sarah are such a pair of idiots. Bell clenched his fist with this remark and told Zane to take it back. Zane asked to repeat what Bell said again. So Bell told him to take back what he had said. He was insulted that Bell dared to defy him. Filled with anger, he tried to punch Bell to teach him a lesson on going against him. But our MC was already prepared and took his stance. Bell punched him in the stomach in return. On his knees, Zane coughed while groaning in pain. Bell, looking down at him, told Zane that he is warning him. Don't ever insult Sarah again. Zane became more furious because of this remark. This loser gathered mana on his palms and told Bell to not fuck with him. He summoned his own armament. Ignite the flame spear. He also threatened our MC that he will be roasting him. Bell realized that Zane was serious but this was fine by him. He told Sarah to step back. Sarah was scared. Bell calmed his sister and said to leave everything to him. Then he summoned Avalon. Our MC took his stance. He was not even scared of what's gonna happen next. Zane was infuriated and asked Bell if he really thought he could beat him with just a scabbard. And then he said that he is an E-rank paladin and that Bell has no chance. Bell then recalled the rankings of the knights during this period. Paladins are split in rank according to their strength. When you just received your divine armament, your F rank. Once you can channel mana in it, you become an E rank. D rank and above can use mana for special attacks. Rising above B ranks requires awakening unique abilities of your own divine armament. 
Bell thought that Zane's so proud of being an E-rank at the age of 14, but he's still developing. Bell smiled. Zane was en ragged with this and asked Bell what he was laughing about. Had he gone crazy or something? Bell replied that it's just he thought that Zane was being cute. Zane was furious because of this and attacked Bell. Sarah screamed for her brother's name. Bell, on the other hand, summoned Sword of Light, Caliburn, and he swung it to Zane's weapon. Zane was shocked. He can't believe what just happened because his spear got broken. He was startled when he saw a sword at Bell's hand. This loser then fell on the ground with his broken spear. His bird also nearly got hit. He thought it was weird. Zane was sure he saw the scabbard was empty. Bell taunted Zane and asked him if he wanted him to make Zane cry and beg. Zane was indignant and accused Bell of trickery. He backed out at a wall and warned Bell that he won't get away with this, then tried to run out of the room. But Bell said that they weren't done talking yet. Bell pulled out the flame gun, Ragnarok, and then he fired it to Zane. This one had no idea what's going to hit him. It almost pierced Zane's cheeks, causing him to freeze. Zane was confused. He looked at his stepbrother again, only to confuse him more. This time, Bell was holding a gun. But Bell just used a sword. It should have been impossible for Bell to have multiple divine arms. Bell looked at him coldly and warned him not to ever mess with Sarah or him again. Our MC raised his weapon and told Zane something that he will never forget. With a menacing expression, he threatened that he would blow his head off if he tried anything funny. Zane was frightened and ran out quickly. Bell sighed in relief. Sarah told him that it was amazing and asked if it was Bell's own divine armament. Bell confirmed and reassured Sarah that she could leave everything to him. Bell said to himself that if it's to protect Sarah's smile, he'd never lose to anyone. Well, it's all because this guy just acquired the most ultimate weapon of all time, the plot armor. A few moments later, inside the castle. Zane confessed what happened earlier to their father, the Duke. He was informed that Bell received multiple armaments. This old man right here is the Duke Catastrophe, Gallian Catastrophe. Kneeling below his father's throne, Zane told the Duke that Bell's armament is not normal. He said that Bell must have made a pact with a demon. Zane was just about to suggest that Bell should be banished right away, but he was interrupted. Contrary to what Zane expected, the Duke found it interesting. Gallian Catastrophe got up from his chair and walked out. Zane was confused where the Duke was going. The Duke replied that he was going to see Bell. The old man claimed that wants to check things out for himself. Bell sighed in relief as he jumped into his bed. He lay his head on the pillow as he thought that he managed to defeat Zane, but his body is still that of a kid. He got tired easily. He can't control his mana yet. He intended to shoot a fire bullet at Zane earlier, but it turned out with no attribute instead. He's only strong as an F rank right now. Bell said to himself that he can't stay like this. Back then, it was the Rothwinzors who attacked. The Rothwinzors, another famous paladin family the catastrophes have had a long rivalry with. Since it was them, anything could have been the trigger for their attack. Bell was sure that the shadowy figure that killed him and Sira was also one of them. He will protect Sira this time. He clenched his fist as he thought that he needed to improve his status in this house first. The door to Bell's room suddenly opened. Our MC quickly tried to get up as he wanted to see who it was. His father entered. The old man uttered, Long time no see, Bell. Bell was surprised as he sat on his bed. Galleon Catastrophe. In the great fight twenty years ago, he fought the evil god and the famous monster, Tartaros, alone. He cut his way through the black continent where monsters live. They call him the Genesis Sword Saint. Bell noticed Zane beside the Duke, grinning at him. He realized that Zane must have framed him for something. Back then, his father would always be in favor of Zane as he saw more potential in him, 
but Bell thought that this was perfect. The quickest way to improve his status is to have his father notice him. Bell calmly greeted the Duke as he kneeled. The Duke looked at him and remarked that Bell sure has changed a lot since he saw him. He told Bell that he came today as his father and urged him to relax and chat. Bell replied that he's afraid that he can't do that. As he is afraid this conversation could spiral out of control, that they were always held accountable for what they say and do. The old man was impressed by how Bell acted. He then urges Bell to stand up. He told Bell that if that's how he feels, then the Duke himself shall take up the same mindset. Then he released his pressure to Bell. Bell is awed by the crushing pressure. He thought that the Duke had a terrifying spirit in him, looking at those piercing eyes. Looking at him, the Duke asked Bell why had he hurt his brother Zane, the brother he ought to show respect. Bell gulped. And Zane thought that this was the end for Bell. He thought that nobody in this house could stand up to their father, the Duke, but our MC maintained his cool and didn't falter. Bell calmly says that he got angry because Zane bullied their little sister. Their father replied and asked him if he violated his rules for a petty grudge. Bell confirmed and said that he doesn't regret it. The Duke grasped his sword at his waist and asked Bell if he didn't regret breaking his rules. Bell replied that to abandon those you loved would be a disgrace to a paladin. He said that he will fight to protect his sister, even if the opponent is his older brother. The old man stared at our MC while checking his resolve, and that is the way of the knight Bell has chosen. The Duke coldly looked at him while pointing his sword at Bell. With the tip of his blade at Bell's neck, the Duke asked Bell if he would fight, even if the opponent was him. Bell looked at him sharply and replied that he would fight even if the opponent is him, the Duke. The Duke raised his brows and smiled. He said he likes it. He told Bell that he'll let this incident slide. Zane was confused and loudly asked why. The Duke faced him and said that not only did he bully his younger sister, he even lost to his younger brother. Facing the Duke, Zane was frozen on the spot. He knew he fucked up. Then the Duke berated him and told him to have some shame. He also ordered Zane to not appear in front of him for the time being. When Zane left the room, the Duke told Bell that he understood his way of the night. Still, he thought it was bold of Bell to speak his mind while understanding the consequences. Bell apologized to the Duke's remarks and said that he is speaking too brashly. The Duke said it's fine and it's a splendid resolution for a man of the catastrophe house to hold. Then the Duke ordered Bell to show him his power. He asked him to take out his divine armament. Our MC bowed as he understood the command. He started gathering mana between his hands. The old man was clearly in shock at what he saw. Bell introduced his divine armament, Avalon, to his father. The duke was surprised to see the scabbard. He thought that this was nearly impossible. He had heard rumors of the legendary divine armament that holds the spirit of the original paladin. The very same divine armament that each of history's greatest heroes had in turn. He asked Bell if it is true that he used both a gun and a sword in the fight earlier with Zane. Bell replied that both those armaments are inside the scabbard. Then he summoned both of the weapons that he used in his fight against his older brother earlier. The Duke was shocked as Bell pulled out other divine armaments from the scabbard. Then Bell told him that he can only use two at once, and there are three other weapons available in Avalon. The Duke was dumbfounded. He then looked at Bell as he couldn't believe that his son would be the next hero. The old man then proceeds to tell Bell that he had no interest in the weak or children. But right now, he will be expecting a lot from him. This statement shocked our MC. Then the Duke left, leaving the words, Work hard to Bell. As the doors to his room were closed, Bell slumped to the floor. He thought that since his father was now expecting great things from him, he would need to get stronger faster. He knew that even if he returned from the future, he was still a kid. 
Bell told himself that he wanted to reach D rank as fast as he could, and so he needed to defeat monsters to gain more mana. He clenched his fist and said that he would start hunting orcs in the nearby forest. Later that night, goblin corpses littered the ground, blood splattered everywhere. A bright blue tail was then seen along the area. The culprit was this monster that walked across the corpses of the goblins. Its mouth was full of stains of blood while it showed its sharp teeth. Its body was finally revealed. A ferocious wolf-like creature howled loudly. The next day, Bell was walking around the forest as he reminisced about his past life. After he got banished from his last life, he trained here in this forest for a while. But Bell thought that something was strange. He had gone pretty far in the forest. He should have run into some monsters by now. A dark shadow was silently watching him from the bushes. Bell wondered at the start why he hadn't seen an orc this whole time. Now seeing the dismembered bodies of the orcs in front of him, Bell was unnerved. Suddenly, he heard a roar from his back. Bell turned around and swiftly brought out a sword to deflect the sudden attack. He stumbled back due to the force. That is when he sees what attacked him. The same monster that hunted all the orcs and goblins last night. A Fenrir. Bell now realized why there are no monsters here. He only wanted to hunt orcs and hadn't thought that he'd run into a D-rank monster. He only had barely any mana now. At best, Bell is currently strong as a high E-rank. Bell thought that he really wanted to get out of here immediately, but there's one problem. The Fenrir would kill him the moment he turned his back. The Fenrir widely opened its blood-red eyes. RMC knew what would happen next. This was the sign that the Fenrir will now attack. Bell was lucky enough to react and dodge it. He then immediately summoned Ragnarok and fired at the creature. Unfortunately, the Fenrir evaded the bullets easily. Bell cursed, and he realized his bullets are too slow because of his lack of mana. Bell thought that if the gun won't work, then he'll just use a sword. Then he charged at Fenrir. Using its claws, Fenrir swiped while Bell dodged to the side. Our MC used this opportunity to counterattack. Bell strikes back, but to no avail. He was shocked that this monster was too agile for his current abilities. The creature was unharmed. Bell thought that if it was the previous him, he would have easily been able to cut it. Fenrir bared its teeth at him and swiped its claws. Bell knew that he couldn't keep up with its speed as he is now. He then uses his sword to deflect the attacks. The Fenrir attacked so fast that several of those landed on Bell's body. The fight continues as Bell repeatedly deflects Fenrir's attacks. Bell thought that this was bad. He can't dodge anymore. Then he was pushed back forcefully. The Fenrir widely opened its mouth and bared at Bell. Bell thought that he just reincarnated. There's no way he can let it end all here. He summoned Achilles, the shield. But as he faced the monster, he was shocked because it jumped over him. He shifted his gaze onto his back. And as expected, he was rammed at his unprotected back. Bell tumbled to the ground. He also dropped both of his divine weapons. They also started to disappear. Tired and now panting, Bell knew that if this continues, he'll actually die. He realized that his sword, gun, and shield are all useless. He was sure that the hammer would be just as hard to land a hit with this creature. In that case, Bell knew that there's only one divine armament left. Bell had no choice, but he had to use it. The Fenrir, enraged, attacked again. Our MC then closed his eyes and called for the last divine weapon. Bell immediately summoned Aegis. It was at the same time when the Fenrir launched its attack. But it noticed that Bell was still standing all right. Our MC was now filled with a dark, ominous aura. The weapon he summoned is a gauntlet. He added that he didn't really want to use this, but in this situation, he had to. The Fenrir attacked again, this time more faster than before. But as it tried to bite Bell, he vanished. And all of a sudden, Bell was already standing at the top of Fenrir. 
He was also holding the huge ass hammer on his right hand. He then apologized to the Fenrir, as it will not be able to hit him anymore. Bell raised his hands with a determined gaze. He bonked the Fenrir's head with full force. Due to this, the creature roared furiously. Aegis, the gauntlet of darkness. It increases one's physical ability by leaps and bounds. Not only that, as time passes, the wearer will only grow stronger. The Fenrir stood back up and was ready to lunge again. But Bell's eyes had already changed. He then commented that it's time for this monster to die. Bell, now clearly influenced by Aegis, faced the charging Fenrir. The battle was turned around and it was clear who had the advantage. They fought for a long time. Bell had this maniac smile while realizing his victory. And after a few seconds, the monster was already on the ground. Bell sighed in relief. He was thankful that the fight ended quickly. And that was because Dark Divine Arms have special abilities right from the start. But you can't dismiss them in combat. The more time passes, the deeper you sink into madness. Looking at the huge Fenrir lying at the ground, Bell wondered why there is a Fenrir in the forest. He was sure that there was none in his past life. He dismissed it and said there is no use worrying about it. His attention was diverted by his hammer. It was now crackling with current. Bell now realized that after defeating Fenrir, he can now use its attributes. Hunting strong monsters sure is more effective than hunting hordes of weaker ones. Bell looked forward to testing this out. Meanwhile, on a small hill at the back of the manor, Sayra was sweetly singing a melody under a tree, a bright smile on her face, seeing the wreath of flowers she made. She wondered if his big brother would like it. Then, a hand suddenly grabbed the wreath. It was Jessica. She was together with Spencer, his follower. Jessica mocked the wreath in disgust and said that it sure fits a girl as filthy as Sayra. Sarah clasped her hands and weakly called her sister's name in fear. Jessica showed the wreath to Spencer and asked what he thinks of it, and this loser told his master that it was really filthy. Then Jessica threw the wreath at Spencer. He already knew what to do, and that was to whip it in half. This guy didn't even have any remorse after. Sira, seeing her wreath destroyed, sobbed. Jessica, bored and with nothing to do, pulled out her armament, a black gun. She wanted to hang out with Sarah now. She smiled at Sarah and said that it's time for target practice. The gun was then fired. Sarah closed her eyes and was expecting for the bullet to hit her. Fortunately, it was deflected by Bell using Avalon. Bell faced Jessica and told her that he'll play with her if she's so bored. Sarah called out her brother's name as she didn't expect him to save her. Bell, on the other hand, smiled and told Jessica that he was just looking for an excuse to test out his divine armament either way. Jessica asked Bell what he was trying to do here. She told him that no mongrel is getting in the way of her fun. Sarah was afraid and held Bell's arm. Bell reassured Sarah that everything is fine now. Bell glared at Jessica. Spencer then questioned him how he dared to glare at Jessica. Looking at these two losers, Bell thought that he was Jessica's attendant. He retorted back to Spencer and said that it's rude speaking that way to a duke's son. Spencer just grinned and mockingly said as if he'd show respect to a concubine's child. That statement hit a nerve. Ouch. Jessica then wondered what happened to Bell's usual meek attitude. She concluded that maybe just because he got lucky on defeating Zane, he had already got carried away. Spencer then said that Zane may have been careless. Jessica replied to think his second brother lost to a scabbard. Then she widely smiled and said that it may have been a fluke, but how hard do Zane have to mess up to lose the fight? Bell responded, why don't you see it for yourself, whether it was really luck or not? Jessica was enraged by this response. She called Spencer and asked for him to take out the trash. Spencer then agreed naturally and took out his divine armament, a whip. He flung it on the ground. And the place where it landed is now covered in ice. Our MC carefully watched and observed the loser, Spencer Gray, a D-rank paladin whose divine armament is an ice whip. He's much stronger than Zane, 
who's only an E-rank. Bell thought that he should be more wary of him. Holding his ice whip, Spencer told Bell that he'd start by freezing Bell's leg so he can't run away, then his arms and torso until he can't move a finger, and then he'll beat Bell's face beyond recognition. Bell got bored and retorted that he sure talks a lot and said that Spencer will suffer for making Sarah cry. Spencer grinned and told Bell to not look down at him. He then raised his hand and commented that he'll turn him into an icicle. The whip was struck in Bell's direction. Bell easily dodged his attacks. Jessica was shocked that Bell could evade it. Bell thought that for a D rank, Spencer's not bad at handling his divine armament. However, compared to his last life's training, this is child's play. Sarah at the back was amazed and said that it was almost like Bell's dancing. Spencer cursed. He told Bell that he's only good at running away. Bell replied and looked at him. As if giving him an advantage, he confidently said that he won't dodge from now on. The three, Jessica, Sarah, and Spencer, were shocked. He coldly said that he's interested in seeing how Spencer is going to turn him into ice. Spencer then retorted that Bell was dumber than he thought. This loser held his whip firmly while screaming that he'll freeze Bell. He said he would fulfill his wish and struck his ice whip to Bell. Bell, his arms wide open, smiled. Sarah got confused as to why her brother did this. As the whip struck his body, both his arms and legs were now frozen solid. Spencer then smiled mockingly that he can't move now. Now he can take his time beating up Bell. But before he finished his words, Bell cut him off and asked if that was all he got. He smiled and said that now it's his turn. Spencer's brows wrinkled. Bell then summoned Ragnarok from Avalon. The scabbard then started emitting this bright light. The ice that covered his hand got shattered as the red gun appeared. Spencer was surprised to see a second divine armament. Bell casted a mana release spell using Ragnarok to his frozen left hand. As the gun fired the shots, the ice was shattered. Now he can move freely as he pleased. Jessica was also shocked with this. She questioned herself why Bell had two divine arms, and on top of that, he could already use attributes. Bell then pointed the gun at Spencer and said that now is Spencer's turn for a punishment. Fire started forming at the end of Ragnarok. All this loser could think of was that he was fucked. To protect himself, Spencer quickly encased himself in ice using his own ice whip. He smiled at Bell and said that he can't attack him now through his thick ice. Unfortunately, the bullet pierced through his thick ice. This guy really thought that he could win against someone who was the protagonist. The bullet had struck him at his chest, causing him to fly backwards and fall unconscious. Jessica was startled. This bitch couldn't believe that Spencer's ice was destroyed easily. That means that Bell was strong enough to take down a D-rank knight. A realization struck her as she thought, she's only an E-rank and won't stand a chance against Bell. Our MC then slowly approached Jessica. He looked at her and said that it's over. Jessica got desperate and summoned her divine armament. She shakingly pointed it to Bell. With fear in her eyes, she told Bell to stay away. Then she fired several bullets, all of them missed. Clearly, she was agitated. And a few seconds later, she tripped herself and fell backwards. Bell walked towards her slowly. He exuded his aura and showed this bee who was really the boss. And with a serious expression, our MC said to her to don't ever mess with Sarah again. Jessica got really frightened. She immediately screamed and ran away. Meanwhile, Sarah ran towards her brother and suddenly hugged him. She asked Bell with worry in her eyes if the whip hurt. Bell then comforted her and said that it's fine, and all that matters is that Sarah's safe and sound. She then praised Bell again. Sarah brought out the wreath that she had made for herself. She explained that the other one got destroyed, but it's all fine now. Sarah then placed it on Bell's head and thanked Bell for always protecting her. Our MC was glad to receive a gift from Sarah. Bell then thought that one day he'll have the whole nation revere Sarah's gift. 
but Bell thought that they still had some problems. Even the employed knights and servants here despised them for being the children of a concubine. And though he had defeated Zane and Jessica, Bell doesn't think that's going to change. Zane and Jessica may show up again to pick on Jessica. And as Sarah's full brother, he needed to guarantee his status in the house to protect her. With a determined look on his face, he already knew what to do next, a few hours later. On top of a hill near the Catastrophe Manor, the Duke is practicing his swordsmanship. The old man closed his eyes to concentrate even more. A leaf from the tree fell, and with a swift movement he performed a series of refined swordsmanship. The leaf was then separated into three parts. What a monster! The old man's focus was then cut off as he noticed that Bell was already standing behind him. He asked Bell what it is that he wants. Bell didn't waste any more time and asked for the Duke's permission. The old man asked what it was for. Our MC then kneeled and bowed his head to show his sincerity. This made the Duke stare at him intently. And then, Bell finally revealed that he would want the Duke's approval to take the C-rank exam. That's all the time we have for today. If you want to watch the next part, please like and subscribe. Thank you, and see you on to the next one.